Hello everybody, this is Dr. Abdelkader Ashour. Today we are going to start a new series of videos about neuropharmacology. Okay, we'll start first with introduction to the neuropharmacology, where we will discuss the basic organization of the nervous system, uh, explain the difference between autonomic and somatic nervous system, and then understand the neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter uptake synthesis, storage, degradation, release, and interaction with postsynaptic receptors. So, what's neuropharmacology? It is the study of drugs that affect the nervous system. Neuropharmacology, pharmacology, okay, study of the drugs that affect the nervous system. Easy, right? However, uh, many drugs okay that can have cardiovascular uh, git effects but they have neural effects okay on the cns okay so they, they their, their major action is on the other organs but they can cause like digitalis can cause like blurred vision disorientation okay this could be caused also by digitalis but this is not the the factor that this digitalis or digoxin is employed for so it only includes the drugs that are specifically employed to affect the nervous system such as uh, psychotropic drugs that affect mood and behavior sedatives hypnotics analgesics anesthetics narcotics anticonvulsants and drugs that affect the autonomic nervous system okay so if you notice here all of these drugs are primarily employed for their effect on the nervous system not as a side effect or adverse effect or a toxic effect they are basically or primarily employed for their effect on the nervous system okay we will focus in this series on the autonomic nervous system okay so uh, uh, let me start first with the organization of the nervous system, okay? Just a, a quick revision. I always advise my students to review the physiology of the autonomic nervous system. Anyway, I'll provide you here with a quick recap, okay? So, uh, the nervous system is divided into either central nervous system, okay, which includes the brain and spinal cord, and peripheral nervous system. Okay, which is uh, further subdivided into divided into autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system. Somatic means voluntary, autonomic means involuntary. Okay. Autonomic nervous system itself includes both afferent division, afferent division, and efferent division. Why I use these uh, signals? Okay, it's just a. Okay, letter A comes before E, right? As far as I know, I don't think there is a change, okay? So, letter A, there has to be, a, a, like, input from the internal or external environment that goes into the central nervous system, okay? And then there will be kind of integration in the nervous system, according to previous experience and whatever. And then there will be an order, okay, from the nervous system, okay, through efferent, efferent or motor neuron okay so here this one's also also called sensory that sense the external uh, and internal environment okay and then send the impulse to the nervous system which will then uh, respond by uh, uh, sending impulse to different organs i'll give you a quick example okay you are passing by a good restaurant you like and you smell that good smell of kebab or shawarma or any meal you like okay what happens what's the first thing you notice you notice that there will be your, your mouth is full of saliva right okay i didn't eat anything i didn't chew anything okay i didn't even touch the food okay so what happens is that there there is a sensory neuron okay that carries this smell into the nervous system so this is afferent okay carries this impulse into the nervous system there will be integration. Integration means 
that yeah, I know this is the smell of kebab or a smell of shawarma or a smell of whatever. Okay, so this is a very delicious meal. So now the nervous system doesn't know that you are, you know, poor. Okay, you don't have such money, but okay, he just the nervous system will interact and say, oh yeah, let's prepare ourselves for this delicious meal that's coming. Then it's in every neuron okay, to your salivary gland, for example, okay, and also to your GIT, but the most prominent one, the one that you can notice is the saliva, right? Send the impulse through every neuron or motor neuron to the salivary gland, then you'll feel that there is a saliva. I think this is a very delicious story, okay? Uh, okay, so the Ephraim division is further subdivided into uh, enteric nervous system, which deals with the, 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 the motor activity and secretions of the, and also microcirculation of the GIT, okay? It's called the brain of the gut, okay? So it controls the motility and secretions of the GIT. And then the sympathetic nervous system, which all we know from the autonomic nervous system from, uh, physiology, that it is thoracolumbar. We'll discuss this later, okay? And parasympathetic nervous system, which is uh, uh, derived from craniosacral source, okay? So here, that was, this is what we just said here, that what's here in red is parasympathetic nervous system. So this is the parasympathetic nervous system. So it's cranial, this is cranial nerve 3, 7, 9, 10, okay? And sacral, that's why I call it craniosacral, okay? The middle three segments of the sacral segments, okay? Then the sympathetic nervous system, okay, is uh, graphed here in blue color, okay? This is the sympathetic nervous system. We said thoracolumbar. Yes, it is thoraco, all the 12 thoracic, and the upper three lumbar. That's why it's called thoracolumbar. They control the activity of the uh, uh, GIT, okay, the l l lung, uh, heart, eye, salivary gland, and many of the organs that you don't need to control. It should not be controlled by you directly should not be under your voluntary control. Whatever our beloved God provided for us as voluntary should be voluntary, like my hand movement. I should have a control over my hand movement. Whatever our beloved God provided to us as involuntary it should be involuntary, like the contractility of my heart, the heart beats, the pumping of blood, the secretion of the GIT, the digestion of food, and all of these functions should be involuntary. Otherwise, it's gonna, it's gonna be a mess, okay? Later on, when we talk about the parasympathetic nervous system, I might give you uh, an example of that. Now, let's talk about the different division of the nervous system, or talk about the somatic and autonomic neurons, okay? Somatic and autonomic neurons. Uh, somatic, okay, somatic, okay, voluntary, uh, I have a control over this, okay, somatic neuron or this movement. So it enables me to, to control certain movements, like my the movement of my leg, you can see it now, uh, movement of my arm, my, my hand, my fingers, my head, and everything, right? So somatic neuron, okay, and autonomic neuron from the name, it is involuntary, okay? So uh, the, the uh, somatic neuron travels from the CNS to the effector organ in one single neuron. One, 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 only one, okay, single neuron, okay, there is no ganglia here, okay? So, and it's myelinated, it's very fast. Then the autonomic neuron, okay, which includes preganglionic, fiber, ganglion, and postganglionic fiber, right? So uh, the myelinate, the preganglionic neuron is a myelinated one, so the impulse travel is very fast, and the postganglionic neuron is non-myelinated. This controls the activity of smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, glands, GI neurons, and many involuntary actions, okay? Uh, is the summary of the difference between them, as you notice here, the somatic neuron consists of single neuron between the nervous, the central nervous system and the effector organ, which is the skeletal muscle here. 
it innervates skeletal muscle. It can lead only to muscle excitation. Muscle does not understand, so there's no inhibition. Okay, if muscle is not excited, there is no excitatory stimuli that uh, uh, lead to muscle contraction, muscle will be relaxed. Okay. The autonomic neuron has two neuron chain connected by synapse or a ganglia, okay, between the central nervous system and the effector organ, one neuron, one neuron, right? Innervates the smooth cardiac muscle uh, uh, glands, GI neurons. It can be excitatory or inhibitory. If you remember from the physiology, like the uh, muscarinic uh, uh, neurons to the heart are inhibitory. It inhibits the heart rate, the contractility. However, the sympathetic neuron to the heart uh, uh, are excitatory, they increase the heart rate and increase uh, uh, contractility and so forth. Okay, I hope this is clear. Okay, then uh, neurotransmission, generally speaking, okay, uh, communication between nerve vessels and between other nerve vessels or effector organ occur through the release of specific signal chemicals, chemical signals, neurotransmitters from the nerve terminals. Okay. The release of the neurotransmitter is triggered by the arrival of the action potential, action potential, action potential, please review the autonomic nervous system uh, physiology, okay, at the nerve ending leading to depolarization. I will review to you uh, in uh, 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 next slides. Will lead to depolarization, okay. Increase, this will lead to increase in intracellular calcium, okay, which will initiate fusion of the synaptic vesicles with the presynaptic membrane, so synaptic physical with the presynaptic uh, membrane, okay, and then release of the content of the vesicles. Okay, the neurotransmitters uh, rapidly diffuse across the synapse, so now there is a synapse, the neurotransmitter will pass through the synapse and then combine with the specific receptors on the postsynaptic target cell, okay, and then start action potential again or depolarization, okay, and so forth. Okay, so this is simplified here. Okay, the efferent neuron of the uh, autonomic nervous system. So here the CNS, okay, the cell body, okay, and this is the axon, okay, it's called axonal conduction, okay, and this is the nerve ending, okay, this is a preganglionic neuron. Remember, we said the autonomic nervous uh, or autonomic neurons has both preganglionic and postganglionic, and in the middle there is a ganglia, right? So, uh so, so again, so the impulse travels from the uh, uh, nervous system, okay, through the axons until the nerve ending where there will be a neurotransmitter release, okay. Okay, this neurotransmitter will travel through, this is the ganglia here, right, travel to the receptor on the postganglionic neuron, okay, and initiate another wave of uh, action potential, action potential, action potential, action potential, okay, until there is a release of the neurotransmitter which will then affect the neuro effect to affect your organ, could be a muscle, could be not, not uh, maybe a muscle, but smooth muscle, we're talking here, here about autonomic neuron, smooth muscle, like the GIT, like the heart, okay, uh, cardiac muscle also, uh, then, so this will affect the, the effect your organ, okay, fine, this is the final of it. So now I, I have this interplay between conduction, Transmission, conduction, transmission. So now you understand that conduction uh, includes the the passage or the, the the action potential, action potential, the impulse, okay, uh, that that travels from the uh, whatever organ like the CNS to the end of the nerve ending, okay, or from the ganglion until the nerve ending, okay. So this is called conduction. The transmission involves the transmitter release and its binding to the receptor. So the conduction is the passage of impulse along the axon or, or muscle fiber, and the neurotransmission is the passage of an impulse across a synaptic or neuroeffector junction, as we just explained. So here uh, we can notice this on this uh, beautiful animation. Okay, so the impulse start from here, from the cell body here, across the axon. Okay, this is my lean sheet. Okay, as action potential, action potential, action potential. You see action potential, action potential until the end of the nerve ending, and then there will be a release of neurotransmitter. Uh, neurotransmitter. This neurotransmitter will affect 
a nearby uh, uh, nerve cell, or if it's the post-ganglionic one, it will affect the effector organ. Okay, so there will be a release of the neurotransmitter which will affect the receptors on the uh, uh, subsequent uh, nerve or the neuroeffector uh, organ. Okay, and then again will initiate a, a wave of muscle of action, potential action, potential action. If it is pre-ganglionic and post-ganglionic, there will be uh, action potential, uh, uh, action potential. So action potential all the way. So conduction, transmission. Then conduction and transmission to whatever uh, 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 the effector organ is. Okay, uh, finally, the action potential. Okay, just we talked about action potential, just a quick revision. You already studied that before in the autonomic nervous system physiology. Okay, whenever there is a stimulus, there will be opening of the sodium channel. Okay, and this will cause uh, depolarization. Depolarization means that I'm going toward the zero. So from the inside, it's seven minus 70 millivolt compared to the outside. Whenever there is a, a, a impulse, whatever, there will be an uh, opening of the sodium channel and then influx of sodium. Sodium is positive, right? So I will cancel negative. So now the negativity will decrease. So from minus 70, minus 50, minus 40, minus 30, minus 20 until zero. So and this zero is called depolarization because cells here are depolarized. There is no pull, there is no positive negative, zero, right? And sodium influx will continue until about plus 30, plus 35 millivolt. And then sodium channel will close. Then potassium channel will kind of say, okay, oh, okay, guys, are you still here? Okay, I'm coming now. Potassium channels will open, okay. But when potassium channel will open, there will be efflux. Potassium will go out, okay? So now I'm taking positive charge from the cell, so the voltage will decrease, okay? Will decrease, decrease. This is called the repolarization because I'm going toward the polarized state of the cell, okay? Of course, after that, there will be the sodium-potassium channel, which will uh, replace, bring back, bring brings back sodium into its original place, which is extracellular and potassium intracellular. Okay, and here summarized again here, this is the action potential, action potential, action potential, okay, and finally the release of neurotransmitter. I hope you enjoyed the lecture, okay, and we'll see you soon in our next uh, uh, lecture in the introduction to uh, neuropharmacology. Until then, I wish you the best of luck and see you.